welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing good. Today we're going to be chatting about my most anticipated releases for the second half of the year. I love doing these videos. I love talking about the books I am most excited for. I love it. <laughs> but let's be honest with ourselves. Let's 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 pull back the curtain for a second. I mm, huh, yeah mm, yeah. Mm. <laughs> I don't think I've been the best this year at reading 2022 releases. I feel like I've still been catching up on 2021. How many have I read? One, two, three, is it only four? Five? Yeah, it's five. <laughs> um, so that's not great. <laughs> I'm hoping to get through more the second part this year. I was speaking to my patrons last night on a reading sprint. We do reading sprints every week. And I was like, you know what? This first half of the year has been a bit tough for me, but the second half of the year, whoa, we're about to, we're about to change. We're about to real go through a transformation. I feel like today the future starts. So it's a good day. The release dates I have, take them with a pinch of salt. <laughs> with a pinch of salt because a some of these will be uk release dates if books have different release dates for uk versus us and these release dates could have changed i wasn't i was too lazy this morning to go through and recheck every single one of them because a lot of these are from when i put them in my spreadsheet the first time so release dates could have been pushed back a little bit but i think they should be fairly accurate <laughs> so let's just get into it we're gonna go in chronological order throughout the year from July to December of the releases that I'm super excited for. First, we have Miss Orchard's Regrets by Louise Hare, actually. I should sit like here <laughs> so I can put pictures here. This is a historical murder mystery, which I've just been loving reading so, so much. This one, it's actually been quite hyped. This one, we're following this woman who feels like life is kind of passing her by. She's not necessarily where she wants to be in her career. She's offered a job to perform on Broadway and given a first class ticket on this ship and listen the offer comes at a perfect time because a murder just occurred at the club where she works oop and she gets on the ship and guess what there's a murder of a family who befriended her oop <laughs> so i'm like is this gonna be like a murder is following her <laughs> is she am i the villain <laughs> am i the villain i don't think i'm the villain I don't know, but I'm super excited. I've been loving reading like historical murder mysteries. I think there's a lot of them coming out and they're really, really fun. So excited for that one. Next is The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. So <laughs> I've had, okay, I've given Riley Sager a two star, a four star, a four star, and a five star. So like we have a pretty good success rate, even though I always say I feel a bit icky. Riley Sager isn't his real name. He wants you to think she's a woman. He's a woman. She's a woman. <laughs> Yeah, always makes me feel a bit strange, but whatever, whatever. House Across the Lake. Is this the one with the couple? Okay, yeah, I was right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have this woman who's recently widowed. She goes to stay at this like other family house. I think she has. It's all right for some. I mean, <laughs> and there's across the lake, a couple that she kind of becomes obsessed with. I think she's like looking at them through binoculars. Like, I'm like Scooby and Shaggy. <laughs> so I decided to go and investigate it. the woman from drowning one day kind of like befriends her and then one day the wife goes missing and the girlie's like I'm about to find out. Next we have How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. So I've never read Grady Hendrix. <laughs> I own the Final Girl support group and I have audiobooks of uh, My Best Friend's Exorcism and Horror Store. Like I want to read all the Grady Hendrix books so bad. Probably one of the authors who I've never read from before that I want to read from the most and so I don't know much about this one. I just went on my list because it's Grady Hendrix. <laughs> And I feel like How to Sell a Haunted House is such a fun title. I think they're trying to like sell the house after both their parents have died and they know it's haunted, but like we just we just want rid or something like that. These two siblings are trying to sell this house. So yeah, I don't know much about it, but listen, Grady Hendrix, I'm very excited to read it. Then we have Sometime in Summer by Katrina Leno. Katrina Leno is an author I've read from before and really enjoyed every time I've read from her. This synopsis always like confuses me. I think it's about this girl who believes that she has bad luck and then her and her mother go to stay in this town for the summer for two months and there's something to do with like a comet like a comet is appearing for the first time of year she's like oh it's for me it's for me so yeah i don't know too much about this one as well the plot seems a bit like nebulous is nebulous the right word let's look up the definition of nebulous was i just big brain energy hi miko miko just come to lie here and look at me while i'm filming that's so nice a concept vague or ill-defined oh my god 
I am the dictionary. I'm a massive fan of the dictionary. You know, we should be like promoting the dictionary anyway because like it is such an amazing like historical British thing, isn't it? I often put authors I love from before, like any of their releases on my most anticipated release. I don't even know the synopsis. That is the way I live my life. Miko, I love you. I'm so happy to see you. You are my best friend, ever. Then, this is one I've pre-ordered. We have The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Sylvia Moreno-Garcia, another author I've never read, even though I own already two of her books. And I've pre-ordered a third one, even I could hate her writing style. And then where are we? If you know me, you know, Strange Case, Alchemist Daughter, my favorite series ever, some of my favorite books ever. We have Catherine Moreau in that book. So this is about the daughter of Dr. Moreau. So I just love, this story and this idea so, so much. I'm just so excited. I pre-ordered it. I love the cover. I just can't believe my luck. I, I just feel like Silver Moreau Garcia said, here you go, Megan, here you go. Like, <gasps> I wonder if the character is gonna be similar. I mean, Catherine in the book is not the daughter of Dr. Moreau. She's one of his creations, but I just wonder, am I gonna get Catherine teas? Cause Catherine's my favorite character from the series. And I'm just so excited. <laughs> so excited. Then we have The Retreat by Sarah Pierce. So this is the second in this detective series that started with a sanatorium last year. I think this one's to do with like a yoga retreat gone murdery. <laughs> and I, I liked the sanatorium. The ending did piss me off a bit, <laughs> but I still want to continue the series and hopefully it was a debut. So hopefully like the books and the author will grow over time. Then we have The It Girl by Ruth Ware. Miss Ruth Ware. Oh my God. I love Ruth Ware. I've read quite a lot of her books. I just think Ruth Ware gives us what we want. She gives us that mystery thriller mainstream kind of vibe. Like I feel like her and Riley Sager are kind of the thriller authors that I'm always going to pick up their stuff. Like I'm always interested in it. I believe this is about a woman whose best friend was murdered 10 years ago. A guy was sentenced and the guy dies in prison. And then a journalist comes to the main character with evidence that he may have in fact been innocent. So she's trying to figure out who actually killed her best friend. Miss Ruth Ware just has something about her. She just kind of gets it. She gets what I want. I hate the cover of this. So I think it's so boring. I think it's so boring. Like I want a bit of flavor. Like, give me a bit of flavor. Maybe when I see it in person, I like it more. But mm, not a fan, not a fan. Well, us even the U US one, the UK one. Jeez Louise is ugly. <laughs> I want to know, what does it feel like to be so goddamn ugly? Next we have These Fleeting Shadows by Kate Alice Marshall. I've never read from this author before, but this one sounds very intriguing to me. It's pitched as The Haunting of Hill House meets Knives Out. And I just said, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, please, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Her grandfather dies and he was a rich bitch and he's left this girl everything. And the, the requirements are that she stays on the grounds of this house for a full year. Otherwise, zilch, nada. <laughs> the house is basically haunted. Why would a grandfather want to do this to his grandchild? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. But um, yeah, very like, you just got to say Haunting of Hill House. I'm like, okay, because that probably fucked me up more than any other <laughs> TV show I've ever read. For some reason, it really got to me. So why not fuck me up even more, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then we have Stay Awake by Megan Golden. This is the author of The Night Swim, which I really, really loved. Um, in this, I think a girl like wakes up in a taxi or something and she goes to where she thinks she lives, like her flat, and it turns out someone else is living there and she has the words like stay awake scrawled on her hand or arm or something. So it becomes clear that she kind of loses her memory if she falls asleep or bad things happen. Um, and yeah, I just love the night swim and this seems like a kind of different direction for Megan Golden to go down. And also I just gotta support the Megans out here. You know what I mean? Megans unite. <laughs> Then we have Empty Smiles by Catherine Arden. This is the last in Catherine Arden's middle grade horror series, which I am just so happy. <laughs> Me finishing another series. I'm gonna be so happy to finish this series. We're following like this group of friends who have these interactions with this kind of like bad guy. I don't wanna say too much because I don't wanna spoil the first one, but they're just like easy listens and it's Catherine Arden, so I'm gonna support my gal. Yes, and she gave me Vasya, she gave me the Brandon Nightingale and I'll always be grateful. But I'm ready for middle grade to be over and for us to get into YA or adult next. Like I feel like we need that. We need that Catherine, so let's get going. <laughs> Next we have Babel by Alif Krang. This is like chonky. I've seen some arcs of it already. She's a big girl. She's a big, she's a big girl. <laughs> That's not the lyrics. You're a, she's a, she's a, she's a, can't remember. She's a rich girl, rich girl. <laughs> I 
know this is set at Oxford. Oxford? It's set at Oxford. And um, it's kind of a look at colonialism within British universities and institutions. And I'm just so excited to see something different from Art of Crying. Now, I do need to finish the Poppy War series. Don't be mad at me. I'm hoping I'm going to finish it later this year. This has been just so hyped up and I'm so excited for it. Then we have Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood. Why did that get me so excited? I don't know the plot of this, going to be honest with you, but it's Ali Hazelwood, who is my favourite romance author ever. It's going to be another sciencey STEMI kind of girl, I assume. I think that's Ali Hazelwood's kind of thing. I've heard mixed things about this already, but I feel like I've gotten myself into the mood by reading um, her STEMnist novella series, which I've been reading the past couple months, which is like short novellas that just came out. And I feel like they're like the hype acts. They're like, they're like the warm up acts at a concert. They're like five seconds of summer before One Direction. Anyone remember that? That was, that was a moment in time. That was a moment in time in my life. <laughs> So I feel like they kind of got me warmed up and got me excited. So I don't need to know anything about the plot. I'm just going to dive straight into it because it's Ali Hazelwood. Then we have Carrie Soto is back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Oh my God, I'm excited and nervous for this. So I'm following Carrie Soto, who is an ex-tennis player. I think she's like reached past her prime and she decides to come back and like show the bitches what she's made of essentially. But it's true. I'm the best. I'm nervous for this because those of you who read Malibu Rising will know Carrie Soto is in that and she's not a particularly likeable character. So I'm just intrigued to see how Taylor Jenkins Reid is going to make us root for her in any kind of way. Listen, Miss Taylor Jenkins Reid, I've given three star, three five stars. Oh, <laughs> I've given three five stars to and there's not many authors that I can say that about that I've read three books from and they've all been five stars. She kind of just gets it. She gets what we need. So I'm just placing my trust in her, but I am nervous about Carrie Soto. <laughs> then we have Unraveler by Frances Harding. So again, don't really know the plot of this. Um, I just put it on here because it was Frances Harding who I read early this year. I discovered from the Novelic app and was like, Oh my god, I'm obsessed. Oh my god, I'm obsessed. Yeah. Mm. Oh, whoa. <laughs> the synopsis is very, like, bland. She's not giving us a lot. It says, Kellen and Nettle live in a world where anyone can create a life-destroying curse, but only one person has the power to unravel them. But not everyone is happy he can do so, and suddenly he's in a race to save both himself and all those who have been touched by his magic. Mysterious. But yeah, I loved A Skin for the Shadows so much, and I was like, wow, this is an author that I just can't wait to read everything from. So I am very excited for that to come out. Then we have The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson. Now we have an interesting relationship. I've, I've read two Tiffany G. Jacksons and I think I gave one 2.5 and one 3. There is not an author I want to love more than Tiffany D. Jackson, right? There's not an author I want to repair my relationship with more, but I don't know. <laughs> So this might be the last test. I mean, I need to read Monday's Not Coming at some point as well. This is like, I think, a Carrie retelling, um, like a, you know, prom, blood, whatever. Um, but I'm really nervous because I want to love Tiffany D. Jackson, but it's not fair of me to her to keep reading her stuff if I've read them a few times and they're just not for me. Because a lot of people love her stuff. So if it's just not vibing with me, it's not fair for me to continue reading them. Even if some of her premises are like the premises and the covers and everything that I'm just the most excited for, I need to like cut you off. I'm gonna cut you off. It has to be done. So this may be the last the last chance for us. <laughs> then we have Marple, which is one of my most anticipated releases that are coming out the rest of this year. This is an anthology collection of Miss Marple stories rewritten by a lot of really famous authors. We have one by Lucy Foley, one by Ruth Ware, one by Lee Bardugo. Oh, I'm just, I'm so excited to see how they reimagine Miss Marple. Now, I've actually never read a Miss Marple book. I may read maybe the first Miss Marple before this and kind of preparation for it to get a sense. I love when, you know, authors reimagine characters and the fact that it's Agatha Christie. I'm just so excited. And authors that I love. I mean, Lucy Foley, Ruth Ware, Lee Bardugo could all be argued to be three of my favourite authors. So again, it's just made for me. It's made for me. <laughs> I think I'm just special. Special. Then we have The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. So Ashley Winstead wrote In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, which again, still haven't read. I'm hoping to read it soon. <laughs> I love the cover of this. It's about a woman um, trying to, I think, expose a cult that she and her friends used to be in. It just sounds so interesting. Ashley Winstead is doing it out here and I need to start reading her stuff because I feel like she's an author that I would absolutely love. Oh, I'm just, I'm just so excited. I loved The Project by Courtney Summers, which is following a cult. I think they're difficult to do well because you want to handle it sensitively for people who perhaps grew up in cults or have been in cults in the past. So 
you really want to handle it with a lot of care and I think sometimes I've read books that are better than others at handling it so we'll see but um yeah I'm super duper excited for this one I need to read I need to read all these books like you all have permission to yell at me speaking of Courtney Summers we have probably my most anticipated release for the rest of the year. We have I'm the Girl by Courtney Summers. I know I need to read it. I spoke recently about, I just need to find the perfect, you know, perfect vlog for it. <laughs> I'm so excited. This is kind of following, um, it's inspired by Jeffrey Epstein about men abusing power and these characters kind of discovering this sick and twisted world that exists. Um, after a murder of one of their sisters. So yeah, I just love Courtney Summers. Again, an author I've read two books from and given two five stars to. So if this is a five star, which I'm pretty certain it will be, uh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna put too high expectations on because I don't wanna like ruin expectations, but I'm pretty sure it'll be up there. Then Courtney Summers will join the list. I feel like three five stars, that's when you really know they're a favorite author, you know? Next we have House of Hunger by Alexis Henderson, which is so exciting. It's about this girl and it says, though she knows little about the far north where wealthy nobles live in luxury and drink the blood of those in their service, Marion applies to, posi to the position. In a matter of days, she finds herself the newest blood maid at the notorious House of Hunger. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited for this. I love Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. I thought it was so atmospheric and vivid and it's one of the books I would say I can remember best. So uh, yeah, it lives in my mind rent free. I'm really excited for this one. Then we have The Glass Witch by Lindsay Puckett. Lindsay Puckett is one of my favorite author tubers. This is her middle grade debut. I think it's like spooky, eerie. I've heard I've heard her speak a lot about it. Um, obviously I watch her videos. You know, it has a chubby main character, little girl. And I think that's such important representation that I would have loved to have seen when I was younger that I think is so important important to have and just hearing Lindsay speak about these I'm like yeah <laughs> then we have Into the Wind Crack Winds by Shonda McGuire this is the next in the Avery and Zib series what is the series called over uh uh in the in the in the up and under are you no, sure do I look as if I'm not sure? This is the whole uh, series that's written by a character from um, <laughs> from Middle Game, A. Deborah Baker. So I have read the first one and I did enjoy it. Oh, then we have one of my favorite ones that are coming out, Into the Riverlands by Ni Vo. This is the third in the Singing Hill cycle, which I've absolutely loved. I think they're such interesting looks at storytelling. Ni Vo does a such such a good job of making storytelling so interesting and captivating. We're following a character called G who goes around and gets stories from people and records them and they're so so interesting and captivating and beautiful and I can't wait I've got two of Nevo's long longer novels to read and I'm really really excited to read them but yeah I, I love this series and I think it's always so magical and interesting and clever and insightful so I'm very excited for this one and then the last book everyone I don't have any December releases down yet I feel like they haven't really been announced the last book is Whiteout which is the kind of sequel to Blackout so if you remember Blackout out was an anthology written by a lot of different authors, Donnell Clayton, Tiffany D. Jackson, uh, Angie Thomas, lots of different authors, and they're coming back to write White Out, which is going to be set in like a blizzard, a snowstorm essentially. And I loved Blackout. I thought it was done so well how the stories were separate but all kind of interconnected and weaved together. And I just think it's such a fun project for them to come out with. So I'm very excited for White Out. I love a good anthology, and Blackout was just very clever in how they were separate but connected. I thought that was done really well. Okay, so there we have it. That is all of my most anticipated releases for the second half of this year. If there's any you think I've missed out that you want me to read, please leave them down below. Any new releases that you're really, really excited for, I'd absolutely love to know. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you got into the end of the video, comment a purple heart emoji down below. I love you guys so much. Thank you for all your support. You guys are the best. You're my best friends, legit. And I love you so, so much. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.